The world of dating apps, it's an absolute minefield, apparently. Am I right, Sonia? It's a bit of a shit show. Like, there's ghosting, boring chat, people sending mixed messages, and that's just stuff I've done. More than 3.2 million Aussies use dating apps or websites. And while millennials are leading the charge, older generations aren't afraid to give them a go. Sadly, getting down and dirty between the speech bubbles doesn't necessarily translate into real-life sparks. You see their pictures and they look quite good, so when you go out on a date with them, you're expecting someone who looks like Sam Taunton, but you kind of get someone who looks like Sam Taunton from Aldi. And while Aldi Sam may be a bargain deal, some lovers are holding out for a premium product. But often, the swipes don't turn into strikes. Everyone's going for the top 10% of people on a dating app. You've literally got a couple of photos and a limited bio. So I just think great people are missing out on each other. And, you know, most people want to meet in the real world. But one Aussie scientist just might have unlocked the key to finding that magic ingredient. Chemistry. DNA romance brings the elements of chemistry to online dating by evaluating your DNA and looking at genes that correspond to uh, human attraction. So how does it all work? We'll send you out the kit, you'll do a cheek swab and you post it back to the lab. It's like, you know, any other dating profile except you've got a little bit of extra information. We have a DNA compatibility rating that indicates the, the level of chemistry between uh, the two people. Hey, if I'm going on dates, I'm probably shedding some saliva anyway, so why not put it to a good cause? But how does our DNA dictate our dating destiny? We've got an opposites attract matchmaking algorithm, so we look at a particular set of genes that correspond to your immune system and we give you a very high compatibility rating if you're quite different to your match. So what are the results? Yep, yep, yep. Oh, Do we have on. chemistry? Um, it says sham, uh, clim- wait, what, it, what does that word say? Cl- Chlamydia? <laughs> so no chemistry then? Oh, I don't think so, Blinky Bill. <laughs> what it fails is, you know, shared interest, values, it doesn't really take a lot of those things to account. Science can't really choose the right person for us when it comes to love. So is DNA dating the solution to your love life or just another dicey tool in the singleton kit? It's all a bit depressing and the mastermind behind it all, Dr Tim Sexton, yes, that is his name, (laughs) joins us now. (laughs) Hey, Tim, are you saying that 40 years of rom-coms have all lied to me? Do we really need DNA to figure out who's right for us? Well, you you don't actually need DNA. Um, You're naturally wired to, to identify the right person. And it's through your sense of smell. So if somebody smells good when you meet in person, that's a great match. And when people use online dating, you don't get to use your sense of smell. So with DNA romance, you get to predict whether somebody's going to smell good before you meet in person. Dr Tim, what gave you the idea for this? Was it your own singledom? (laughs) <laughs> in, in part, it was part of my, my single journey, but the idea sort of first occurred when I was doing my PhD in uh, population genetics at Southern Cross University in Australia, and uh, I was reading about this concept known as balancing selection, where genes maintain a lot of diversity at a point in the genome for a specific reason. And there was a textbook example of uh, birds that mate for life find a partner that has very different genes at the MHC complex, which is the, the region where we're talking about. And so that's that's where I was first aware of the idea and uh, sort of progressed from there. If, if birds choose their partner for life uh, based on their sense of smell and ultimately their genetics, then it sort of led from there. And so it's really quite an animal response that we have, but we've kind of overridden those instincts, haven't we, with the use of, like, perfect perfumes and deodorants. So how do we get past the tricks? There has been some experiments that actually have explored this hypothesis and the the findings from the research actually show that perfume enhances your your natural scent. And this is why different perfumes smell different on different people's skin. So that's why you can say that smells good on you. Ah. Yes. Does that mean Sam still has to wear Lynx Africa, though? Yeah, well, my girlfriend likes it, so (laughs) maybe it's all working out. Dr Tim, have you used any of this DNA magic to engineer your own love life? Not necessarily engineer my own love life, but help guide me in in my relationship choices, certainly. And? And? 
I've I've definitely had some success. Hey. Oh my goodness. Do you want to borrow the Lynx Africa, Dr. T? <laughs> I don't need it. Well, well. He knows what he's talking about. Uh, Dr. Tim, thank you so much for your time. Thank you very much, Thanks for having me on.